If you've seen the film uh, Chariots of Fire, you'll remember a scene in which Eric Little, the great Olympic champion, was trying to explain to his sister why he liked to run. And uh, whether or not Little actually said this, he should have, and he certainly lived it. He said, I run because when I run, I feel God's pleasure. And if ever there was an athlete who uh, played with such abandon and, uh, and just exuberance and, and both college level and the NFL, it's, it's Ronnie Lott. Uh, uh, he just seems to be having a lot of fun. And uh, I, uh, and, and I, I, actually, I've been a USC fan, and that's not why he's here. You just didn't know that. I've been a USC fan for many years, and he had, actually, I've been a fan for 17 years before he showed up at USC. Uh, but he, uh, he, just one of these amazing confluences of circumstances, uh, on that team in 78 in the next three years, uh, they had a man who ended up being the, one of the greatest defensive uh, players in, in college and NFL history. And also a running back, Marcus Allen, uh, who would become one of the greatest running backs in college and NFL history. Uh, but again, that's not why I've asked Ronnie Lott to come here. Uh, he did, uh, with the 49ers, uh, play for eight division titles, uh, four Super Bowls. He's got some rings with him if you want to just uh, take a look at them. Um, his number was retired, number 42. Uh, but again, that's not why I've asked him to come here. Uh, I'm a big sports fan. That's not why I asked him to come here. Uh, there's one big reason, uh, and that is uh, Ronnie is fundamentally uh, the same as all of us. So we have been given gifts and, uh, and opportunities. And those are things, that many of them, things we have no control over. They're just things God hands us. And uh, as the saying goes, uh, uh, the gift we give back to God is what we do with the gifts he's given us. And of course, college is all about uh, discovering your calling and your career and, and your, why you're here. And, uh, and that's the reason uh, I've asked Ronnie Lott to come and be with us because he has continued uh, to live life with the same uh, single-minded devotion and, uh, and joyful exuberance uh, that he used when he played, played ball. But uh, a lot of you weren't even alive when he was playing ball. <laughs> I reminded Ronnie of that this morning, and he shook his head just like I'm shaking my head. Because, But uh, you, you need to get a little clip, uh, one minute worth of YouTube uh, record, <laughs> recording of just what this man did on the football field. Let's watch. All right. Hello, everyone. Let's welcome Ronnie Hello. a lot. Well, that man wreaking such havoc on the field is also a daddy and uh, grown children pretty much now. Yeah. And uh, happily married. Uh, now, I said I didn't invite him because of his uh, football prowess only. But, Ronnie, I asked you to you just tell us a story about a, a, a really big moment in your life as a professional athlete. Well, you know what's great? First of all, I just want to thank Michael Moe uh, for inviting me down here. And uh, more importantly, I want to thank all of you. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. And I, I think I should run over here in the corner because I always run in the corner. And they say that when you were a kid, you had to have show and tell. So I'm going to show my rings. And I'm going to let these young girls over here start. And they can pass them all the way around. Um, you know, it, 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 it's... You, you talk about a moment in life, you talk about a moment in life and what you talk about when you start thinking of moments, I started thinking about the moments that I just felt a minute ago. And the moments that I felt just a minute ago where I saw a lot of young people just so excited about God. And one of the great things for me is that when you see a lot of young people so excited about God, you realize that there was, a, there was a moment in my life when I felt the same way. That I felt the same way as you guys. And what I saw is I saw a young girl even playing hurt. Yeah, you, can you stand up? She's playing hurt. She's got ice on her knees. She's actually singing over there. Woo! Woo! Man, you know what? That's a woo moment. I don't know if you guys know that, but in life, 
One of the great things, and I think one of the fascinating things to me, is that you always see people making incredible sacrifices for God, but you see people making incredible sacrifices for themselves. And that was a woo moment for me. I mean, I, when I saw you sitting over there, I said, Jerry Rice couldn't do that. <laughs> Joe Montana couldn't do that. That is unbelievable that you're singing and playing Hurt. Woo, man, I love it. I love it. So for me, this is an, it's an honor to be among so many talented young people. And uh, this was a woo moment. I don't know about for you guys, but the reason I, I look at woo, and because I know this, who's ever had a woo moment? Who's ever knocked out somebody in, in this room? Has anybody ever hit somebody so hard that they that they just couldn't believe? Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, okay. Oh, stand up. Tell me what it's like. <laughs> it's um, it's pretty exhilarating. <laughs> yeah, you really? So wait a minute, I'm not gonna let you go. Come on. So how good is it? <laughs> um, it's 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 really good, especially when it's um <laughs> when it's regulated and it's it's allowed. It's it's there's nothing like it. <laughs> you know what? And, and and as he was saying that for me, as he was saying that, I can feel his heart, and I can feel his soul, because I know what you're saying. I know what you're trying to articulate. But I also saw this young man sitting right next to you when he was singing and he was praising the Lord, he had the same feeling. So I can go back through my life and I can go back when I was a young kid and man, I had this inside me. I didn't have what he has and I didn't have what other people have, but man, deep down inside, I know what you're saying. Deep down inside today, I still have to exercise that. I have to exercise that. I can't hit people anymore. <laughs> but I got to still exercise that, serving others with the same desire and passion and love for God. So that's what, I, that's what got me excited. Your partner right next to you sitting there talking, you know, and I know this. That's how I felt when I hit somebody. So for a lot of you out there, you will find your woo moment. All of us will find our woo, mom, our woo moment. God provides that opportunity every day. Every day. Every day. Trust me, I look for it every day. And today, I saw an example. Today, I saw another example. I find great woo moments every day in my life. So this is, this is incredible to be amongst so many talented young people. Yeah, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And, Amen. Uh, that you do with all your heart. Now, uh, uh, Ronnie, I want to hear a little bit about your family. Uh, we, uh, I read a, an account of a dinner in your honor up in the Bay Area. And uh, the joke being passed around was that... Uh, you got involved in charity because uh, there was a girl you were trying to impress. And she really wanted to meet Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And so you put on a charity event, got him to come up there. And uh, I think you got the girl, too. But yeah, I did get the girl. <laughs> I married the girl. We've been married 25 years. Yeah, that's... Trust me, that's, that's, that's a woo moment. <laughs> 25 years has been unbelievable. I, 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 going back and looking at those moments early on and now looking this for you guys, an hour ago, my coach called me, my wife called me and said, okay, you got to let them know about woo. I said, what, what are you talking? She goes, you got to let everybody know that you got to have woo in life. And so my wife this morning woke up and went to a banquet and she was excited about the announcer who was there who said, Everybody knows that you got to have woo today, and um, and so my, I, I'm I'm very 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 fortunate to have a, a great a great great wife, but a, a a great follower of Jesus Christ. Right, and your kids are not that far removed from. Uh, no, they're group, they're right? a lot like all these kids here. I have a I have a, uh, a senior that, or excuse me, she just graduated from LMU, 
and I have two kids at Santa Clara, and then I have an older son, Ryan, who is um, trying to be an entrepreneur now. Okay. Uh, why do you, well, why do you do what you do in charity? Uh, you, for, for a long time, you've been involved in at-risk kids, uh, uh, people with uh, severe cancer, and you've, you've, you've brought a lot of your teammates along, and what, what gets you to do that? What makes you want to do it? Well, first of all, I think if you're going to play the game, mm -hmm. and you're going to play God's game, you have to learn every day that you have to serve another individual. There are days that I find myself realizing that I didn't do enough. You know, when you have a dad like I have, I grew up in San Bernardino. I was a military brat. We moved around a lot. But when you grow up and you see your dad and you know what he's gone through and you know the challenges and you understand his pursuit and you understand what he wants in his life. So he always tells me that don't have any regrets. And I'm sure all of us have had moments where we've had to think about those regrets. We've also had moments where he says, look, exhaust life. Well, if you think about serving others, if you think about serving others like these two guys just talked about, in their heart, they don't know what it feels like, but if I serve somebody else, I know that I'm really, really committed to the cause of changing this world. We can make this a better world. And we can make it a better world because we have to exhaust the opportunity. There are kids that are not here. There are kids that would love to be in college. There are kids that would love to be in this environment. This is a privilege to be in this environment. And so there's a lot of kids that don't get this opportunity. To me, you got to get kids and everyone to understand that, man, you got to continue to serve. And there's, and if you guys know this, if we did a, if we did a rally and we said, let's just all of us give a nickel and we said, we're going to provide a scholarship for a kid just so they can have this environment. I promise you, serving that opportunity would change that kid's life. So for all of us, we got to continue to always evolve and think about how we can give more of ourselves each and every day. Can you tell us a little about some of the kids, uh, at-risk kids you've worked with in Palo Alto? I know that's uh, East Palo Alto, I believe, yeah. more specifically. Uh, but you've just given us a general sketch. But can you tell us about someone who comes to your mind right now as you talk about this? Oh, I, I can tell you a couple of stories. There was a story of a young man that we were trying to get into a school called Eastside Prep. And the young man was trying to get in there because he knew that it would change his life. Well, this young man was set on fire by his buddies. A Hispanic kid set on fire because his buddies didn't want him to go to that school. They were jealous that he had the opportunity. Now, for me to know that you could, you could go that low and yet to see that kid evolve, to see him evolve and to understand that, man, I got more, Ronnie. You mean, that's not going to deny me? So when I see a hit, and you, somebody tells, tells me that that's courage, or when somebody says, well, you cut off your finger, and yet I see a young man who was set on fire who says, I'm still evolving. I am not going to be denied. I'm going to change the course, course of my family. That's an example for me to realize that, man, I got so much more to give when you got a young man who is trying to change everything in his life. And for all of us in this room, man, take time tonight to be thankful. Take time tonight to be thankful for where you're at. But take time to pray for somebody who is still trying to fight who's still trying to fight to be in your game, to be in your community. Take time. And if you take time and you start to think about it, which we all will, because I know we all will think about it, that we'll, we're, we'll find a way to encourage other young people to do what he's done, to fight through the adversities, the challenges that he goes through. But that's just an example of a young man. And then we have another young man who is now working for HP, Hewlett Packard, who Hewlett Packard, the great thing about this story was one of my buddies is, a, is an executive at HP. He had never been to East Palo Alto. 
I said, man, why haven't you been across the street? It's literally five minutes. He goes, well, because I've never been invited. Well, you mean I have to invite you? And so we invited him over. He got to know Javier. And not only did he get to know him, but now Javier is working for him. And just because of that relationship, just because of one opportunity to allow him to see that he could come in and help the community, it's changed the community and it's changed that kid's life. Now he's, he's got a job. He's not going to live in East Palo Alto for a long time. More importantly, it's going to change the course of all his family members. Those opportunities are the opportunities that I believe God is asking us to work on. Now, you're a busy man. And uh, what do you spend most of your time doing? I spend most of my time watching football. <laughs> <laughs> and I spend a lot of my time watching football for a host of reasons. I spend my time watching life for a host of reasons. And the reason I spend my time doing those things is because I find myself realizing that there's much more to give. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've had a, a number of businesses. I've been very fortunate and blessed to have those businesses. They've been able to uh, change the course of my family, change the course of my, my, my friends and my relationships. So that keeps me busy. And then I, on Sundays, we have our moments where we go to Saratoga Federated Church in uh, Saratoga, which is a, uh, a great church. We've got a great pastor. He's an awesome guy. He's a Dallas Cowboy fan. So he's not that awesome. Because I don't, for all you guys out there, I know there's some cowboy fans in here because I can smell you. <laughs> and you can smell them all the time. And they're, they're, you just know they're around. You know, they're hiding. But I am not a cowboy fan. I just do not like the Dallas Cowboys. Are you wait, still wait, an ass? Wait a minute. Did I hear a cowboy fan <laughs> over there? Uh, you know, you can take the guy out of the game, but you can't take the game out of the guy, I'll tell you that. Uh, you know, s some of the other guys you played with, and I know you stayed in touch and they're still good friends, uh, can, you, can you tell us a bit about what some of them are doing, uh, just along the lines of the thing you're doing? Yeah, you know, look, guys like Jerry Rice and guys like Joe Montana and guys like Dwight Clark and a bunch of players that I play with all find themselves trying to find a way to give of who they are because they know that they got to give back. Uh, more importantly is, 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 is that they're all, they were all great athletes. And I'm, I'm going to share a story with you guys. To me, it was a great story. You know, Jerry Rice, Jerry Rice was a guy who was probably the best player to ever play the game of football other than Jim Brown. Phenomenal player. But the fascinating thing to me is that Jerry Rice, every day that we played or every day that we practiced, Jerry Rice had this incredible ability to always, to always play 100 miles an hour. The great thing, though, is that there were white lines, there are boundaries around the field. And one of the great things that I used to see him do every time he caught the ball, he would run near the sideline and he would cha-cha. He would cha-cha before he would go out of bounds. Now, when I used to watch that, I used to say to myself, how amazing. What's a chop-chop? A chop-chop is when you just, you know, chop your feet. Okay. Can you do that? <laughs> hey, man, you got some rhythm right there. <laughs> you definitely have rhythm. He does have he does have a little rhythm, right? <laughs> woo, woo. But the great thing about the great thing about Jerry Rice is that he did that every time that he got near a sideline. He got near a sideline thousands and thousands and thousands of times. The thing that I thought was amazing is that the good Lord would always tell Jerry Rice that he's not good enough. That he hasn't played the perfect game. And I would say, Jerry, but you have played the perfect game. He goes, no, you don't understand. You don't understand what I'm pursuing in my life. I want to pursue to be the best ever. And so when I see the white line, I want to make sure that I'm going to make sure that both my feet are constantly in all the time. So for 20 years, 20 years, 20 years, 
Every time we saw a white line, he would cha-cha. For me, when I think about the profession of being great, and we're looking at all these students and, and asking them to pursue their greatness, I, I hope that they exhaust whatever game they play the same way Jerry Rice exhausts those moments. That's kind of the life you should want to live. When I saw the young man singing back here, or the drummer, I was like, man, are they going to exhaust their talent? Are they going to realize that, man, their talent is going to move a lot of people? It's going to move a lot of people. For as long as they're able to sing the gospel, it's going to move a lot of people. How long and how hard are they going to work at that to exhaust those moments? How do you get the strength to live that way? Oh, man, you got to get on your knees. You got to wake up every day knowing that God is right in front of you. Secondly, you got to have an imagination. You got to have an imagination of knowing that there's high expectations of you every day. I, I, I know this because I was talking to Steph Curry and I was sitting there with Steph and I said, Steph, tell me about how great it is to shoot the ball the way you shoot the ball. He goes, man, every time I shoot the ball, I believe it's going in. I said, well, but, but I know you believe it's going in, but sometimes you take shots that you know that you can't make. And he goes, but my imagination never tells me that I can't. And I think one of the things that we forget about sometimes, we put limitations on who we are. And this young man went from zero, went from kind of nothing, not a first round pick, to an MVP. And he went from an MVP to an incredible, an incredible human being. And he'll tell you all of it is due to work. All of it is due to what Jerry Rice did. All of it is done because they exhaust every opportunity and they allow their imagination to know that they can be better every day. Again, there are, going to be, there are a lot of kids in this room that are going to have those kind of imaginations and they're going to have that kind of pursuit, that kind of ethic of working hard every day that will allow them to get everything they possibly can get out of life. Now, this is going to sound like a really shallow question. Yeah. Right? But anyway, I always want to know, is it fun? <laughs> it better be fun. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't see... I didn't see you, were you laughing when, I, when you came up and started talking about making that hit? You, it was fun, right? Oh, it had to be a lot of fun. Any other, there were a, a couple other folks, there were a couple other, some, somebody, is there a, uh, some other folks that raised their hand talking about hitting? I see a young lady back there, she's, I can see her right now, with, yeah, you, you, right there, I see you. Yeah, next to the young lady. Yeah, both you guys right. Yeah, stand up real quick. Yeah, both you guys stand up. Oh yeah, so you. Uh, I didn't. You know, I just. I, I know this when when I was looking. Both you guys have had moments where you've like dominated, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Shy, you know, they're being shy, but you, yeah, we have. We're, we're, we know we've done. But more important, let me ask you this. What, what do you think about at night? What do you think about in terms of how good you can be? You, what do you dream about? Being better every day? And who's, who's your role model? <laughs> you said God, but what? <laughs> oh, I know. I, look, I understand that God's always first. I get that one, right? Because I understand that. But also, as you get ready to say God, but your teammates love it, love it. So they, so your teammates are good enough to encourage you to finally get better every time you walk out on the court. Oh, that's I, I love that. So does everybody have great teammates around them? Can, you, know, you guys all have great, great, everybody has great relationships around them. Everybody has great friendships around them. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's what I thought. Well, Ronnie and I talked on the phone a couple of weeks ago about coming to chapel and uh, 
he, uh, I said, well, what do you usually do when you come and talk to folks? And he said, well, I, I just have them ask me questions. So I said, well, I got some questions. We're okay. running out of time, so we can't do that. Okay. But uh, I was really impressed and actually really touched. Uh, he asked me what I was about to do. And it turns out I was about to come over here and speak in chapel. And he asked me about the message, and I told him. And he said, yeah, I believe that too. And then uh, I said, well, can I pray for you? And I, I, he said, sure. And then I said, well, I'm saying goodbye. And then Ronnie said, then, can I pray for you? And, uh, and he did. And Ronnie really appreciated that. And uh, OK, I'm putting you on the spot. Would you say a prayer for us here at Westmont? Yeah, Mark? you know what? Why don't we do this? Why don't we get everybody to stand up real quick? Because I know everybody's sitting down. Everybody stand up. And if I can get everybody not only to stand up, but if we can hold hands real quick, because this is probably the only time that I can ever have another huddle in Westmont like this. I've never been in a huddle like this, so. And then I'm going to get my two basketball stars. My two basketball stars. Here we go. Come on over here. My two basketball stars. Yeah, come over here. Come on over here. Come on over here. And now we can just get a little bit tighter. Everybody get a little bit tighter because in my huddle, if my huddle, we got to make it really tight. Here we go. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know you guys got to get back to class. Okay, stop. If we can get everybody to stop right where you're at. Stop right where you're at, guys. Stop right where you're at. Now, if we can, if we can just bow our heads real, for a moment. Now I know this. This is an incredible team. This is God's team. And I can feel everyone's soul. You know, this is one of the great moments in my life because you guys are giving me you. You're providing me you. You're allowing me to see you. You're allowing me to touch your heart. You're giving me your heart. I'm going to turn it over to my girls, and I'm going to ask them to pray for us. God, we are your team. We look to you for our strength, and we find our purpose in you. I just pray that in everything we do, whether it be athletics or academics or whatever endeavors we're involved in, that we just pursue you first and we just allow you to fill us with joy and purpose every day. Lord, I pray that we found our, uh, find our wow moments every day in life and that we can um, move past ourselves and get out of our comfort zone and just look for ways to um, move and help other people get to your kingdom. And in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.